What is up, guys? Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Kevin Kreitz. This is the channel where we go over to crypto news, followed by five charts every day. Today, looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, ICP, EGLD, and AXS. And as always, timestamps are down in the description below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on to catch notifications for all daily uploads. The market is having a bit of a pullback today. Nothing too huge in my opinion, though. I mean, Bitcoin is still trading around 44 and a half thousand Ethereum. Still hanging on to that 3000 mark, dipping a little bit below at times, but nothing too huge as far as price action goes. And as usual, we're seeing the market reflect Bitcoin and Ethereum's price action. Everything down somewhere between 2 to 5%. ICP down around 10%. We'll be looking at ICP's chart later on in the video. Another one worth mentioning is EGLD, up close to around 10% today, up around 43% this week. EGLD pumping while the entire market is having a bit of a pullback. We'll be looking at Elrond's chart later on in the video, but overall the market is looking decent. Just a slight pullback while Ethereum and Bitcoin cool off from that insane pump they put in over the last couple weeks. For those of you who are new here, this has become one of my favorite websites to check on daily. It's etherchain.org slash burn. It lets you keep an eye on all the Ethereum being burned ever since EIP 1559. You can see here behind me, it refreshes every 10 to 15 seconds or so. And we are currently sitting at 15,500.8 Ethereum burned. So at the time of filming, Ethereum is trading around $3,000. We're going to round down just to make things simple. We're going to go 3,000 times 15,500.8 equals $46,502,400 worth of Ethereum has been removed from circulation in just the last few days. So it really is no mystery as to what is driving Ethereum's price up so aggressively. There is millions of dollars worth of Ethereum being removed from circulation every day. We're going to be keeping an eye on that here daily, at least until Ethereum starts showing some signs of slowing down. But with that level of a burn rate, I would not be surprised to see Ethereum continue to pump. But regardless, it's definitely fascinating and we'll be keeping an eye on that here daily. I don't want to spend too much time on the news today. There's a lot to talk about as far as the charts go, but there is quite a bit going on with crypto regulations in the U.S. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that for a few minutes. We have this article here. U.S. Senator warns passing unproven crypto law will stifle innovation and poor Americans. There is an ongoing debate in the U.S. that we are currently all aware of as far as crypto regulations go. Some support stronger regulations. Some do not support stronger regulations. U.S. Senator Mike Lee from Utah is one of those that is fighting for not pushing stronger regulations. He was quoted in the article saying, If in fact we pass this bill, mark my words, it's going to have a chilling effect on innovation within this sector. Places outside the United States may well be the ones to reap the benefit associated with the laws here in the United States if we adopt an unproven, untested, unknown strategy. And I think that is the most important takeaway of this article, that more strict crypto regulations in the U.S. won't really stifle the crypto space as much as it will stifle American innovation and contribution to a space that may possibly become an essential part of the future of technology. As far as affecting price action, I mean, Elon Musk's tweets affect price action, so I would not be surprised to see this news, if negative, pull the market down just a little bit. But as far as the coming weeks go, as far as Ethereum being burnt daily, as far as the future of the crypto space, I see this as a speed bump. I really don't see this as too huge of an obstacle. There are already a lot of obstacles as far as cryptocurrency goes in the U.S. Binance has the largest trading volume out of any cryptocurrency exchange, and Binance is banned in the U.S. They do have a Binance U.S. version with limited features, but that is just one example of the fact that as far as the U.S.'s approach goes to cryptocurrency for the time being, they are holding themselves back, in my opinion. But I don't see this having any substantial effect on the crypto space in the coming weeks. Looking at Bitcoin's daily chart, let's turn on our notes and zoom in and take a look at price action here. So Bitcoin did challenge that 45,000 mark that we did talk about. You can see here that wicked right a little bit above 45,000. And now you're having a bit of a pullback. There is nothing wrong with that pullback as far as price action goes. At least on the daily, I'm not seeing any indication of a pullback. Let's jump over to the four hour chart and take a look at that. So again, bit of a slight pullback. If anything, I mean, look at this move here. A bit of a pullback is healthy in my opinion. I could see it bouncing off off around 43.1 as far as price action goes. But again, let's just turn off these notes. And for those of you who are new here, just take a look at this. This is Bitcoin's four hour chart. This is Ethereum's four hour chart. So again, there is no mystery as to who is leading the pump and who is leading 
price action across the market. It is Ethereum in every way, shape, and form. But jumping back to Bitcoin, let's just focus on Bitcoin's price action and turn on our notes here and talk about price targets. Actually, before we talk about price targets, let's jump to the one week, turn off all our notes and compare Bitcoin's one week chart to Ethereum's one week chart since the weekly candle is now officially closed. As far as this goes, this is a much better setup. We talked about the fact that Bitcoin needed to get above 46.7, but these candles here, this is still a very decent setup. This candle is a very nice weekly close. You can even see here the stochastic RSI is curving up for the first time since pretty much March as far as that goes. I mean, really, you could even go back to February, but this is a very decent setup for Bitcoin on the weekly, but even better is Ethereum's weekly chart. Ethereum's weekly close on this candle was pretty much perfect. We talked about the fact that if Ethereum could get back above 2845, that is a very bullish close. Ethereum is closed around 3000. I mean, look at this candle, look at this setup. It is back above the baseline. This conversion line is gonna have to come back up, but overall, this is a much more bullish setup than it used to be. Bitcoin and Ethereum both looking very decent. Ethereum more so than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin at the end of the day, it was headed into that Kumo cloud, got that relief bounce. And now we got to see price action trade above 47,000, which is possible. We're going to talk about that on the daily, but Bitcoin's weekly chart is looking great. Ethereum, same story. You can see that stochastic RSI starting to curve up. So as far as price action goes, there is potential for both of these charts. But let's jump back to Bitcoin's four hour chart, turn on our notes, and now let's talk about price targets. So looking at Bitcoin's four hour chart, it does have a bit of support. It's dumping right now in price action back to around 43.2, 43.17 to be more exact and bouncing towards the upper region of 43.6 where it is running into a bit of resistance. So if it can't reclaim that 43.6 level, I start to keep my eye on some of these lower levels as far as price action goes around 42.5 would be my next target. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Bitcoin trade around 42.5, but 43.17, if we jump to a shorter time frame, is showing a decent amount of support there. But again, if we jump to the 30 minute time frame, this does have the potential to dip a little bit lower. You can see the lagging span on the 30 minutes has popped through. Baseline conversion line is trying to pop through. Bit of a trend change here on the 30 minutes. I wouldn't be too surprised to see it move towards this target here, right along that 200 EMA of around 42.5. I mean, on the extreme end, this will come up and it could always land around 40,000. But to see Bitcoin back below 40,000 anytime soon would be kind of shocking in my opinion. So as far as price action goes on the four hour chart, keep my eye on these price targets. 43.17 is a decent amount of support. 43.6, there's gonna be a bit of resistance now with that conversion line. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin trend back down towards 42.5, maybe trade back and forth with 43,000. On the low end, I keep my eye out for 40.8, which is around 41,000, lines up with the moving averages on the shorter time frames, as well as the baseline on the four hour. Stochastic RSI is very low. If anything, this dump was a very healthy pullback for Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can see here, it lines up perfectly with the stochastic RSI going down as well as on Ethereum stochastic RSI dropping down making room for a pump in the coming day potentially and Ethereum's chart is the main one I am focused on this is very clearly Ethereum leading the pump I mean look at Bitcoin's four hour chart not a great looking chart in my opinion Bitcoin very clearly wants to trend back down in price this is entirely Ethereum carrying the market. And Ethereum does still have a bit of room to dump in price. It's really not a big deal. As long as Ethereum's four hour chart does not challenge or enter this Kumo cloud, Ethereum is on a very strong uptrend. As far as price action goes for Bitcoin, let's be keeping my eye on these price targets for the time being. And again, if we jump back to the daily chart, hide these notes and take a look at the potential breakout scenario, you can see lagging span is potentially pushing out of the Kumo cloud, bit of a pull down here, conversion line, baseline, both out. If we compare that to Ethereum, again, Ethereum setting up for the potential breakout, lagging span was out, it's dropped back in. They could potentially always drift down in price. I mean, just because the breakout scenario is there does not guarantee it's going to happen, but a bit of consolidation in this area on both these charts before a potential breakout is very normal. So as far as price action goes, we keep our eyes on potential breakouts and potential pullbacks. If it does consolidate in this area, kind of bounces between 42.5, 43,000, maybe even dipping down to 40,000 at one point, that still leaves the room for a breakout towards 48.7. And again, a challenge of around 45,000, which is now the resistance level. As far as pullback targets go, it's pretty straightforward. We'll be keeping our eye on 43.6, which it already has dropped below, but that's gonna be resistance now. Below that, we'll keep our eye on 43.1, below that, 42.5. Below that, I keep my eye on 40. 
8,000 and on the lowest end, right around here, right around that level that we've talked about for quite some time, right on that moving average around 38.7 for Bitcoin. Looking at Ethereum's daily chart, Ethereum, in my opinion, still looks very primed for a breakout. I mean, look at this conversion line, baseline it popped out, lagging span popped out, popped back in. Maybe that's because of Bitcoin, or maybe it just needed to cool off after all of this movement, but Ethereum still looks decent. I mean, don't get me wrong, it could always trend down in price. If we jump to the four hour chart, the four hour chart is my main indication of what is going on with Ethereum. As far as the four hour chart goes, as long as Ethereum doesn't approach or challenge this Kumo cloud, Price action looks great. I mean, this is around with the, when Ethereum was around 1790, 1725 on the low end, actually went as low as around 1714. But as far as price action goes, Ethereum still looks great. A bit of a dump in price is really not a big deal. As far as the lower time frames go, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you know I tweeted this this morning and it looks like it's about to hit. Ethereum on the 30 minute time frame, ever since around July 20th has been riding this 200 EMA and never really dropping too far below it. This area here was just right after the hard fork. But as far as price action goes, it looks like it's about to hit that target that I tweeted this morning that just right here on that 200 EMA where I'm expecting a good bounce from Ethereum. But the only thing that I am kind of concerned about is this area here. Actually, I guess it did do a bit of a red twist in the Kumo cloud is there where, well, I mean, it looks like it's about to hit my target. We might catch this live on video while we're recording this. Yeah, it's pretty much a hundred percent about to hit my target. So Ethereum should bounce off the 200 EMA here. We'll come back to this 30 minute and chart in a moment and take a look at it. But as far as Ethereum goes, I'm keeping my eye on the four hour chart. As long as it doesn't enter or approach the Kumo cloud, Ethereum, in my opinion, is still on a strong uptrend. The other time frame I am keeping an eye on, the 30 minute time frame I'm keeping an eye on that 200 EMA, which we are seeing a bit of a bounce now, but that's not a guarantee that prices might not trend lower from there because if we jump to the 15 minute time frame, similar story, different price targets. If we zoom out here on the 15 minute time frame, you can see here July 20th, price shoots up, rides that 200 EMA, but at times dipping to the 600 EMA, shoots up again, hits that 600 EMA, and here we are now prices below that 200 EMA with the possibility of a drop to this area of around 2834, which if we jump over to the four hour time frame, does line up with this baseline. So that is still a possible pullback target if that 30 minute 200 EMA price target does not hold, but a drop to 2834 again is still not a big deal as long as it doesn't approach the Kumo cloud on the four hour time frame. A drop to 2834 right where that baseline is, if anything, is pretty normal as far as price action goes. So let's jump back to the one day chart and talk about the breakout potential. If prices do trend up, I'm still watching that price target of around 3187, which it did challenge, but it did not quite get above. But above that in a real breakout, I'd be keeping my eye on the price target of around 3564. But if we jump over to the 30 minute chart, because I believe it's bounced off my target now, you can see here, yeah, it's bouncing off of that 200 EMA now. But my only concern is that 15 minute chart we just talked about. Because if we look at the 15 minute chart, that doesn't quite make sense. And this price target does make a bit more sense. Now we should see maybe a possible bounce here. But if we jump to the 45 minute chart, that is where it makes the most sense. So this price target lines up with the 15 minute chart but the 30 minute chart, we're gonna have a potential bounce on the 200 EMA, but I still would not be surprised because of the 15 minute chart dipping below here to potentially end up around 2834. And if we look at the 45 minute chart, that makes the most sense. Because if we zoom out on the 45 minute chart, July 20th, we have Bitcoin or Ethereum started trading around 1750. And on the 45 minute chart, it never dips below the 200 EMA, which would be around this price target here of once this comes up, this is gonna be the 200 EMA here. So around 2850, 2845, which lines up on the one day chart with the bottom of the baseline, which makes the most sense. So I would imagine, or sorry, not the baseline, the conversion line. So I'd imagine a pullback to around 2850, 2837, but a possible bounce right now around 2922. So yeah, let's go with those price targets because they make the most sense in my opinion. As far as a pullback goes, if we turn off these notes, a drop to the conversion line is still very bullish, especially on a move like this. Probably drop to the conversion line, consolidate here before 
pressing back up. But again, there is the potential for it to drop to these lower price targets. But I imagine we should get a nice strong bounce at around 28.37, 28.51. Because if we jump over to the 30 minute chart right now, we can see here we didn't quite get that bounce at the 30 minute. So then it does make sense on the 45 minute we're headed down to that price target there on the 200 EMA around. 28.37 to 28.51. So we jump back to the one day chart. Price targets for Ethereum, pretty simple. Is potential resistance now at 29.22. It might catch itself, press back up to that area. But as far as pullback targets go, it's now dipped below 29.22. So my pullback targets make more sense around 28.51 to 28.37. On the low end, I'll be keeping my eye on 24.62. 29.22 is now a bit of resistance, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it trend back up in that area sometime soon. As far as breakout targets, as long as it can get back above 31.87, it does have the potential setup here to shoot for 35.64. Pullback targets though for the time being, since it's around 2,900 now, we'll leave this 29.22 out of the discussion. Keep my eye on around 28.51 to 28.37, and on the lowest end, I keep my eye on 24.62. Looking at ICP's daily chart, let's zoom in here and turn on our notes. ICP's daily chart is a little messed up. I mean, ICP has not been around that long. And as far as price action goes, I'd imagine that straight downward trend on the daily chart kind of messes up a lot of the information on the daily chart. But if we zoom in here, turn on our notes, what we can see is that ICP has managed to push into the Kumo cloud. Not just that, we are seeing for the first time on the daily, this Kumo cloud twist over here that ICP could potentially work its way into a bullish scenario. You can see right here, a little bit of a green twist, not a huge one, but that does set up the potential for a possible push up in price and break out for ICP. If ICP can manage to get above $67, it does have the potential to shoot for around $83.96. Now, if we jump to the one hour chart, we can get a bit more information. You can see here that ICP has managed to push up in price with a nice impulsive move, and it does have a decent amount of support around 53. It could drop anywhere from 51 to $47. Still all decent, still decently bullish. Around 43 or below, I would get kind of concerned that maybe ICP is gonna be trending back down towards $37. But if we jump back to the one day chart, zoom in here and talk about these price targets. So price targets on the daily chart are pretty straightforward and pretty much in line with the one hour chart. It's got to get above 67.9 for the potential to shoot for at least 83.9 or above. Pullback targets, it does have a bit of support around 53.9. Below that, I keep my eye on this price target here, which lines up with the conversion line around 51.16. Below that, I keep my eye on this price target here of around 46.37, which lines up with the baseline. And anything below 43. 0.76 and ICP could potentially be headed back down to the bottom of the Kumo cloud where I'd be keeping my eye on 43.7 on the low end 39.54. But the initial pullback targets I keep my eye on are 53.1, 53.9, sorry, 51.1 and 46.3 for ICP. Looking at Elron Gold, EGLD's daily chart. I've turned on our notes from last time we talked about EGLD. Elrond is looking bullish. The entire market seems to be in a bit of a dump. Elrond finally running into a bit of resistance at this price target here around 129, working its way back down now, but still it looks all right. If we jump to the four hour chart, turn off our notes, EGLD looking very bullish, but a bit of a pullback would not be too surprising considering the market is having a bit of a pullback right now as well. As far as price targets go, the initial pullback target I keep my eye on now that it's kind of dipped below these higher ranges is around 115. And if we jump back to the one day chart, if it loses 115, I start to keep my eye on a pullback to around 110. I think that makes the most sense. Once that conversion line comes up, wouldn't be surprised to see Elrond bounce off 110 and then possibly challenge resistance again from there. Below that, if we jump back to the four hour chart, as long as Elrond stays above that range, if Elrond can maintain 114, 115 or above, Elrond is very bullish and still does have the potential to push higher up in price from there. However, if it does lose 115, drops down to 110, I wouldn't be too surprised to see it challenge the Kumo cloud, may even work its way down to around 105. And then from there, it does have good support around $95, $96. We see it trade there before, but as far as price action goes, as long as it can maintain 114, 115 or above, EGLD is still in a position to push back to resistance and try to retest 129. If it loses 114, I keep my eye on a pullback to around 110 and below there, I keep my eye on 105 to $95 for EGLD. 
Looking at AXS's daily chart, AXS had quite the interesting day yesterday. Let's turn on our notes from last time we talked about AXS. Actually, let's keep the notes off for a sec here. AXS on the one day is looking very bullish. You can see here price action trending along that conversion line and does have the possibility, in my opinion, to shoot back up to these high prices. If we jump to the four hour chart, yesterday AXS out of nowhere jumps from around $40 to $47 and it is having quite the pullback. And right now, let's jump to the one hour chart and you can see here, putting in these absolutely insane one hour candles, depending on how high this gets, that'll give us some indication as to what direction AXS is going in. It might not get as high as last time and keep trending sideways in this higher range. But in my opinion, if we look at the one day chart, AXS is potentially setting up, in my opinion, to push higher up in price. But again, there is the possibility it could be trending down on the four hour chart, but it can't, it seems to be holding these higher price ranges. And this move yesterday was absolutely insane. I mean, this happened over the course of one hour. If we go back to this one hour chart so from $40 in less than an hour, and it was actually much less than an hour. If we jump to the 45 minute chart, so a little under an hour and 45 minutes this one 45 minute candle went from 40 to about $42 and then from there shot from 42 straight to around $47.5. That is an absolutely insane move in just an hour. So as far as AXS goes, I would not be surprised to see it trend up in price. Let's jump to the four hour chart and talk about price targets. As far as price targets go, I still would not be surprised to see AXS go a little bit higher in price. Stochastic RSI is low on the four hour. Stochastic RSI is very low on the one day. I think AXS does have the potential to shoot back up to these higher price targets of around 53.7 or above. On the four hour chart though, this aggressive of a move, as long as it stays above $40, which it has done. I mean, around here, it did look like AXS was potentially about to dip below $40, which would push it into this lower range that we talked about, which is around $37 to $40 in trading in there like it did about a week or so ago. But AXS is maintaining that higher range with that massive move above $40 to around $47 in AXS, as long as it can push out of this Kumo cloud. So we do need to see AXS get back above $45, but AXS looks very potentially bullish. And above all, it's the one day that's giving me the indication that AXS does want to push up in price. You can see here, even with this massive move, it never really dropped back down to the baseline. It's just riding that conversion line. So as long as AXS stays above $40, it is very bullish. If it drops to $37, not so bullish, but it still is decent above $37. 33 or below is where AXS is showing signs that this pump may be finally coming to a bit of a pull down and lower consolidation. But it stayed above 37, it shot back up above 40, it's holding above 40 strong. So as far as price targets go, as long as it can stay above 40, AXS is in a decently bullish zone. The lower below 40, it goes to 37, little less bullish with the concern of it dropping to these lower price targets of $33. So price targets for AXS, it's gotta get back above $45 with strength. If AXS can trade above $45 with strength, pushed around 46, I would not be surprised to see AXS make some big moves back towards $53, $54 or above. AXS still looks insanely bullish, just riding that conversion line, never dropping back down to that baseline. However, there is the possibility it could always drop back down to $40, lose $40, drop to 37 and potentially even $33. In that scenario, AXS not so bullish, but price targets for AXS to make things simple, it's gotta stay above $40 to show strength. Trading above $45 with strength would give us some indication that AXS could potentially shoot for around 53 or higher. As far as pullback targets go, if it loses $40, I'll be keeping my eye on 37.7 and below that 33.7 for AXS. All right, folks, that's all for today. If there's any charts you want to look at in the future, leave it down in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn that bell on to catch notifications for all daily uploads. If you're not following me on Twitter, Kevin Crates underscore on Twitter. I'm extremely active on there. Anytime you tweet at me, I will always tweet back at you. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'm out.